With the end of the domestic season coming into view, thoughts are beginning to turn towards the summer and the European Championships which will be taking place. With the help of Football Manager 2021, we are going to simulate the tournament and see just how well our simulation correlates with what happens at Euro 2021. So how is this simulation going to work? Well, basically, what's going to happen is we're going to simulate all of the group stages first because way too many games uh, to bring all of the highlights from. So we get through the group stages and then we're going to, once we get into the second, the, uh, the knockout stages, we're going to go through every game and we're going to see how it all plays out. We're going to use a combination of Pez and F uh, Football Manager to, uh, to see out the simulation, just to make it look all fancy. So uh, yeah, uh, you also will notice that the groups are not uh, accurate because then you have to go in, make a whole separate database, but then once you made that separate database you couldn't play any other tournaments. It's a bit of a pain in the arse, so we just didn't bother. So it's not accurate, but sure, nothing is these days. That doesn't even mean anything. So we're going to go through the groups and then we're going to simulate past the group stages. Uh, and get into the knockout stages of the tournament. So what are the groups that we have been drawn? Well, I'll bloody well tell you if you'll just hold on a second. In Group A we have the Czech Republic, Italy, Spain and Ukraine. Group B consists of Austria, Croatia, Ireland and Kosovo. Ireland and Kosovo do not qualify, but sure, what, do you, what can you do? Uh, group C, Belgium, Finland, Holland and Wales. That's a pretty difficult group there for Wales and Finland. Then we come on to Group D, Germany, Portugal, Romania and Sweden. That is a very tasty group. Group E, England, Norway, Poland and Russia. And finally on to Group F, which you could probably class as the group of death. There's not really a standout one in this uh, in this draw, but Denmark, France, Switzerland and Turkey. Actually, yeah, that's a pretty difficult group. So that's probably the group to watch uh, as regards as the group of death is concerned. But that is all of the groups. That's all the rules. That's how we're going to present the this simulation. So without further ado, we're just going to batter on past the group stages and then we'll join you after all of the group games are played and look at the draw for the last 16. And there we go, just like a lady of the night, the group stages have come and gone. And we are left to uh, pick up their pieces and figure out what's just happened in the past few weeks. Looking at the groups here, let's just see who has qualified for the second round. Spain and Italy uh, qualified out of Group A and the Czech Republic also qualified. I assume as one of the uh, the top runners up. Uh, along with Austria, Croatia, Kosovo have qualified as well. Ireland didn't pick up a single point uh, out of that group. They'll be very disappointed. But then again, they're not technically in the tournament. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Group C, Belgium and Holland qualify. Both Finland and Wales miss out. Wales not even uh, scoring a single point. Finland get a win though, so that's, that's nice for them. Uh, group D, Portugal, Germany, both qualified. Portugal top the group, actually. Well, there you go. Germany and Romania both qualifying on four points. Sweden miss out in Group D. Group E, England top it on seven points. Norway and Russia through. Poland miss out. So Robert Lewandowski will not be going any further in the European Championships. And finally, in Group F, current world champions France and Switzerland qualify out of the... Uh, the kind of group of death, uh, Turkey and Denmark both miss out. So what is so? Those are your qualifier teams out of the group stages. So how is the second round looking? As we're going to have a look now. Here are the fixtures for the second round. Holland will play Spain, Italy against Croatia, Czech Republic play Austria, Belgium and Russia will square off. Germany will play Norway, Kosovo take on France, Romania take on England and Portugal will play Switzerland. So now that we're in the second round, there will obviously be games being played at the same time. Uh, I can only attend one of these games at a time, so we are going, because I can't be in two places at once, which is surprises as big a surprise to me as it is to you, I'm sure. So we're going to have a look at the Holland-Spain game, and we'll see, uh, we'll catch up on the Italy-Croatia game after that. A blockbuster way to kick off the second round of fixtures in this tournament as the Dutch take on the Spanish at the Johan Cruyff Arena. Two former winners of this competition look to get back to be the elite in European competition, but to do so, they will have to take out one of the favourites of this tournament. Here's Gaia. 
to get the ball across and he does and there's the header and it's just over the top of the bar corner for spit for Holland Vindal in and there's a header over the bar from Virgil van Dijk Holland looking to play the ball out of defense it's cut out and here's Gaia plays it forward for Ansu Fati who's going to run at the defense here Fati and it's been cut out and play cleared away but not convincing it's played forward again in towards Alvaro Morata what a chance and it's saved by Drommel Ball in, there's the header and it clips the top of the crossbar from Spain. Approaching the end of the game, it remains 0-0. It's been a very drab affair, it must be said. And it's going to go to extra time. The first knockout game will go to extra time. Both sides look very, very cagey and very nervous. hundred and twenty minutes of football has not been able to separate these two sides a very drab affair not the ideal way to kick off the knockout stages of this tournament which means we're going to go to penalties to see who will progress it's Spain up first it's Soler it's in Spain take the lead in the shootout Soler with the goal that'll be Coop Miners for the Dutch it's a terrific penalty from Teun Coop Miners. Dutch on level terms. A penalty apiece has been scored. It'll be Paco Alcacer, the forgotten man. He hasn't forgotten how to find the back of the net as Spain are two for two from the spot in the shootout. Two two, that's a terrific penalty from the Dutch. As they are on level terms. Ansu Fati now. The young man does not feel the pressure. That's a magnificent penalty from the Barcelona midfielder as he makes it three out of three for Spain. And Memphis! Calmness personified from the spot. The Dutch level 3-3 three, three in the shootout. It's going to be Jose Gaia. And it's straight down the middle from Gaia, no messing around. It's been four for four from the spot. And it will be Vindal for the Dutch to take their fourth kick straight up and straight into the back of the net from Owen Vindal. As it's four four after four kicks apiece. Sergi Roberto sends the keeper the wrong way and Spain are five for five in the shootout which means that ne the Netherlands have to score it will be Frankie de Jong he has to score to take this to sudden death de Jong steps up and de Jong it's a magnificent penalty right in the bottom corner and we will go to sudden death a hundred percent from the spot for both sides Urente for Spain it's been saved Dromos makes the save and the Dutch are now on the verge what a difference a kick makes they had to score to stay in it and now they have to score to win it and who is it going to be it's going to be Myron Boadu a young man who has made his way in the game to into this Dutch side Boadu has scored it and the Dutch are through Spain have been eliminated on penalties. The Netherlands have done it. Will this be the year that they finally reclaim their crown as European champions? Following the Dutch into the quarterfinals will be Croatia, the World Cup finalists from 2018. Scraped through after they seem to have been dominated by the Italians in regards to XG and just general match stats. But two goals one from Nikola Vlasic and one from Petkovic is enough to put Croatia into the quarterfinals where they will join the Dutch. As we move into the second day of the second round fixtures, the Czech Republic have beaten Austria by two goals to one. A game in which they seem to thoroughly dominate as goals from Patrick Schick early on and Yankto from the penalty spot give them a 2-0 lead before Raguz 
give the Austrians a consolation in the 56th minute, but it will be the Czech Republic who will be joining the Dutch and will be joining the Croatians in the quarterfinals. With that we go into our featured game of the day as Belgium take on Russia. It's now or never for this so-called golden generation of Belgium. The likes of Eden Hazard, Romelu Lukaku and Kevin De Bruyne look to prove as to why that they are the dark horses of this tournament as they take on the World Cup hosts from 2018 in Russia who themselves will be looking to make as big an impression as they did at the World Cup. Approaching the end of the first half, no real highlights to speak of. It's been extremely drab, extremely dire. Inside the final five minutes, and here come Belgium forward. It's Castagna. Looks to get past his man, looks to get the ball across. It's been blocked, and Russia. It's a very dangerous ball across his own box. And it's not the best clearance as Belgium come forward yet again. It's Hazard. Eden Hazard! And it's saved. Last chance of the game before extra time, surely. It's Golovin. Golovin gets the ball across, and it's in! Oblyankov has scored for Russia! Absolutely incredible! The free kick was taken short by Golovin, he gets it back, beats his man, gets it across, and there's the header, and Russia have the lead in the 90th minute. And that is going to do it. Belgium have fallen to Russia. Incredible. One of the tournament favourites are eliminated by the underdogs. After that huge shock in the previous game, both Norway and Kosovo will look to emulate the Russian success. But they will have a hugely difficult task as Norway will take on Germany and Kosovo, God love them, will take on the current world champions in France. The shocks just keep on coming. Germany have been eliminated by Norway. After extra time, it finishes 3-2 to the Norwegians. Incredible stuff. Arguably a bigger shock than Russia knocking out Belgium. But this would be the king of all shocks as Kosovo take on France. It's possible. Who knows what could happen. This tournament seems to be throwing up a whole heap of intriguing results. But this would be, this would top all of them. Possibly the biggest upset in European football history. If ever there was a time for this fairy tale to continue, for Kosovo it is now. This tournament has thrown up some bizarre results. But this would be the most bizarre of them all, as Kosovo in their first international tournament will have to take on the reigning world champions in France. Free kick to France. It's going to be Griezmann to take it. Hits the wall. Comes straight out to Paul Pogba. Though Pogba fires back in and Pogba gives France the lead. And you have to say they deserve it based on the run of play so far. Paul Pogba. The free kick was taken from Griezmann. Hits the wall. Comes to Pogba and Muric is going to be extremely disappointed with himself. Should have done better with that. France now are just easing the ball around the pitch. Under no pressure, they have the lead. Kosovo are having to chase them. Here's Pogba. Plays it out wide for Mbappe. Kylian Mbappe! Well, he is human after all. Kylian Mbappe puts it wide. Chance for Kosovo. They're on the ball. They have a chance to show what they can do with it. Here's Milot Rashica. Looks to take on his man. Plays it back in field. France are standing off Kosovo here, and it could be dangerous. It's played in behind, and they've scored! Chigrova has scored for Kosovo! Unbelievable! The biggest underdogs in the entire tournament are taking on the reigning world champions, and they are level! What a story this could be! Throw in for France, deep in the Kosovo half, it's been played all the way back to Rafael Varane. France are absolutely shell-shocked, having been comfortable, perhaps they were a little too comfortable. 
great ball though from Pogba finds Martial, plays across and Griezmann's there to tap in. And France retake the lead through Antoine Griezmann. There's the response. There is the response that the French were looking for. Pogba with an immaculate ball. Martial squares it for Griezmann and it's the easiest goal Antoine Griezmann will ever score. Approaching the end of the game, Kosovo have tried their very hardest and they have absolutely given it their all. But it's not enough by the looks of it. There is the full time whistle. France have qualified, but Kosovo did not make it easy for them. France will know they were in a fight in this game. After the drama of the world champions being pushed to the limit, we move on to the final day of the second round fixtures as Romania take on England and Portugal take on Switzerland. And that is the game we will be focusing on as the current holders of the European Championship look to regain, the, look to regain or retain their crown, I should say. But they will have a tough game against Switzerland as Romania will take on England in the early kickoff. And it goes as the form book would suggest as England qualify into the quarterfinals as they take out Romania by two goals to one. The Romanians did take the lead early on, Coman giving the Romanians the lead in the 51st minute until Jordan Henderson uh, restored parity for England and Raheem Sterling with seven minutes to play gave England the goal that has taken them into the quarterfinals and has sent Romania home. What a way to round off the, fi the final game of the second round of fixtures as the current and reigning champions Portugal look to continue the defence of their title against Switzerland. The likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Rui Patricio, is, their la is this their last chance at continental glory with their country? Throw in for the Swiss. Here's Denis Zakaria. Switzerland making Portugal do all the running here. It's Freuler. He plays it out wide for Kevin Mbabu. Can he get the ball across? His options in the middle. There is the ball across and it's in. It's ended up in the back of the net. It's an own goal. Florentino Luiz has got the final touch. And five minutes in, Portugal are behind through an own goal. What happened here? Mbabu gets the ball across. They look to clear it and it's hit their own man and ended up in the back of the net. Portugal shell shocked. They are a goal down and haven't really threatened the Switzerland goal. Swiss look very comfortable in possession. They're going to keep hold of the ball here. It's Remo Freuler again. Finds Shakiri back to Freuler. Out wide for Mbabu. And he's going to get it across and he does! And Ruben Vargas makes it 2 0 Switzerland. Almost an exact repeat of the first goal. Portugal didn't learn their lesson. And Mbabu on the overlap. Completely free. Look at the time and space he's been given to get the ball across. And it's a terrific header from Vargas. Switzerland double their lead. Portugal really need to respond at the start of the second half. And they have Diogo Jota with a fabulous finish. That's the way to get back into this game. If Portugal are going to retain their title, that is what they're going to have to do. That is the, comp the response of champions as Diogo Jota fires in past Jan Sommer to half the deficit. Free kick to Switzerland in by Shakiri. What a ball it is! And it's in! Manuel Akanji restores the two goal lead for Switzerland. Absolutely incredible. Portugal have just got back into the game and it's a sucker punch from Akanji. 3-1 Switzerland. Portugal need something and they need it very, very quickly. Zakaria goes in and Zakaria's already been booked and he's just filed Gonzalo Guedes and he's been sent off. Ten men of Switzerland have held out to this stage. There's the shot fired in and Sommer makes the save corner for Portugal. They need something and they need it very, very quickly. Comes back out to Guedes. Or Guerrero, I should say. Guerrero again. And he tries a Rabona. Now is not the time for that sort of carry-on. Less than a minute, two minutes left to play. Ajeti with a shot. 
and it's just about dealt with by Patricio. Another corner for Portugal right at the end of the game. It's been cleared away. And here's Alban Ajeti, and he's going to run. Look at the space he has to run into. Ajeti to seal it for Switzerland. Just wide. Just wide of the post from Ajeti. Portugal are on the verge of being eliminated. We are... But there it is, Portugal have been eliminated. The full time whistle goes and the reigning champions have been eliminated from the tournament. Unbelievable, we are guaranteed new European champions as Portugal have been eliminated. And with that, the second round comes to an end and we have our lineup for the quarter final matches. Some huge shocks in the previous round gives us some very interesting fixtures in the quarterfinals as Norway will take on France, the Czech Republic will take on Holland, Russia will play Croatia and England will take on the conquerors of the European champions Portugal as they take on Switzerland. The quarterfinal stage is going to kick off with Norway against France, that is the game that we will be focusing on and the Czech Republic Holland game follows at 8 o'clock in the evening so our first quarterfinal is about to kick off Norway who of course took Germany out will take on France who got that huge scare against Kosovo in the second round just as we discussed Belgium having a golden generation this has been a renaissance for the Norwegian national side the likes of Martin Odegaard and Erling Haaland have really come to the to the forefront of European football fans minds throughout the past few years but they of course have the biggest task of all to take out France whose team is just littered with superstars and just absolute talent throughout the entirety of the squad. It's going to be a fascinating game. El Abdullahi will take this throw deep in French territory. Here's Odegaard, looks to get it across for Auga! And it's just over the top. Pogba will take this free kick for France. It's Pogba! It's absolutely magnificent from Paul Pogba. His second goal of these knockout stages. In off the crossbar, nothing Hansen could do about it. And the world champions have the lead. Here it is again, Pogba. Oh, Anderson's pushed it onto the bar. The second time a goalkeeper has not covered himself in glory and Paul Pogba has profited from it. Five minutes to go before halftime. France have a free kick with Zuma. Finds N'Golo Conte. Benzema. Mbappe in behind Mbappe. It's a terrific finish from Kylian Mbappe. He doubles France's lead just before halftime. Kylian Mbappe. The boy is an absolute superstar. Benzema, the old guard to the new generation. Benzema to Mbappe and Mbappe finds the back of the net. Lloris plays it long. Cut out by El Abdullahi. Has to go back to Hansen. Norway looking to launch an attack of their own. That's a terrible pass. And Zuma's picked it up and Auga's gone in on Kurt Zuma. He's already been booked and Jens Petter Auga has been sent off. Norway's day goes from bad to worse as they're down to 10 men. Mendy out for Mbappe. Finds Zuma on the overlap. The terrific ball in from Zuma out by Ayer. Comes back to Ferlon Mendy. Now he's going to have a go. Cut out well by El Abdullahi. Mendy again is going to have a chance to get it across. And he does get it across. And it's in. It's 3 0. And that surely is the dagger. Wasim Ben Yedder has scored. And France surely now can't be caught. This looks like it's going to be the end of the road for Norway. France had to improve on their performance against Kosovo. And they've absolutely done that. Norway have surprised many by getting to the quarterfinal stage. But this is where their tournament ends. As France comfortably qualify for the semi-finals. So France qualify for the semi-finals as do the Netherlands picking up a 1-0 victory over the Czech Republic who themselves went down to 10 men. Yankto who scored in the previous round has been sent off and Myron Buadu gave the Netherlands the winning goal in the 68th minute. Netherlands absolutely dominated the game but that was due to the sending off of Yankto. Patrick Schick also picked up an injury which probably didn't help the Czechs in their pursuit of the win but Netherlands are through Myron Boadu's goal is enough to put them into the semi-finals. As for the third semi-final game, we join it in progress. It kicked off at 5 o'clock. The latest score is Russia 1, Croatia 1. 
Perisic for Croatia and Mirinchuk, Alexei Mirinchuk for Russia. It's 1-1 as we as it stands. But we will have to jump into the England-Switzerland game and see how that game plays out between Russia and Croatia. We're going to go off and watch England take on Switzerland to see who'll be joining both France and the Netherlands in the semi-finals. After the disappointment of being eliminated at the semi-finals of the 2018 World Cup, England must be desperate to add some silverware to their trophy cabinet as they are surely one of the favourites going into this tournament but what a stern test stands in front of them as Switzerland who knocked out the reigning European champions in Portugal stand in their way. They will be no pushover and they will look to prove that in this quarter final. Here's Trent Alexander-Arnold lays it inside for Jordan Henderson finds Declan Rice pulls onto the ball very nicely finds Mason Mount now Harry Kane has to come deep to get the ball. Here's Raheem Sterling. That's a terrific ball in for Rashford. Beats his man. Rashford gives England the lead. Marcus Rashford in the 24th minute. Froiler back to Nico Elvedi. The two exchanging passes. Elvedi gives it to Froiler. Froiler gets the ball across. And there's So. Jibril So scores. The flag's up, is it? Are Switzerland going to be denied an equaliser? Going to VAR. And the goal has been disallowed. Jibril Sai offside. England have escaped. Here we see on the replay. He is offside. No need to go to VAR. Jibril Sai offside. But that is a warning for England into the second minute of the two minutes allotted at the end of this half for stoppage time. Elvedi gets it across. Shakiri and now Froiler. Elvedi pulls it back for Granite Xhaka and Dean Henderson has to get in front of the ball. It's a save that he should have made, but he had to make the save nonetheless. Another England corner, Mason Mount. That's a good ball in towards John Stones. And England against the run of play for the majority of the first half. It has to be said, they're on the back foot, but they have popped up. John Stones out jumps his man. It's a terrific ball in from Mount. And John Stones doubles England's lead. But here comes Switzerland. Rashford heads it out. Gibraltar, so Switzerland need a response if they're going to get back into this game and stay in this competition. Gibraltar, so find Xhaka out for Froiler. He's got plenty of time and space. He picks out Vidmar. Vidmar can't get it across. Here's so he does get it across. Shakiri's there, and Shakiri has scored. He always seems to pop up on the big occasion for his country, Jordan Shakiri, And Switzerland are back in the game. Gibril So, who was denied a goal in the first half, gets the assist for Shakiri, And with 20 minutes to go, it's game on. Inside the final five minutes. If Switzerland are going to do something, they're going to have to do it now. Five minutes of added time has been played. And England survive. England are in. To the European Championship semi-finals but it was a tough slog honestly they seem to be outplayed for the majority of this game Switzerland had more of the ball more key passes more better chances more better chances that's not correct grammar but I'm ex it, it, it is what it is drama aplenty in these quarterfinals as Croatia have qualified they've beaten Russia but it took till the 92nd minute and a goal from Brozovic. A very close game by the looks of things. And Croatia have just been able to squeak out a victory through Brozovic in the 92nd minute. Incredibly, it will be a repeat of the World Cup semi-final as Croatia will play England and France will play the Netherlands in these two semi-final games. We'll be able to watch both of them as they are on separate days. So we'll get to see both the France-Holland game and the Croatia-England game. And we'll find out who will be going to the final of Euro 2020. So here we go. It is time for the first semi-final. France take on the Netherlands. This is going to be an absolute cracker, you would imagine. The last time that France won the World Cup, they went on to win the following European Championships in the year 2000 after winning the 98 World Cup. Is this an omen? Can they do it again after a 2018 World Cup victory? Standing in their way is the arguable fallen giant of the Netherlands, desperate 
to get back on top and regain their status as the elite in European competition. We're set, the stage is set for an absolute cracker. Hopefully it lives up to expectations. French have a throw, it's going to be Hernandez to take it, it's a poor one, Coop Miners cuts it out. And here is Daniel Malin, plays a terrific ball for Memphis, Memphis is in behind here, he's one on one with Mandanda, and Mandanda makes the save, Mandanda in for Hugo Lloris. And he's proven why he's been selected as he denies Memphis. The only real talking point of oh, the first half was that Memphis chance. It's not really living up to the bill and hopefully the second half will provide a bit more action. Immediately, France have a free kick, Alwar and towards Laporte! And Imeric Laporte gives the world champions the lead right after half time. His first goal for his country and what a time to get it. Usam Awar with a picture perfect delivery. Laporte rises highest and the keeper can't reach it. France take the lead. Find out with the throw. Coop Miners flicks it on. Laporte heads it away and now France look to break with Kylian Mbappe. If there's anybody who can break, look at the run from by Mbappe. And he's been denied. It comes to Awar. It's a it's a calamity at the back for the Netherlands. Hussam Awar doubles the French lead. The Dutch architects of their own downfall. No one could get near Mbappe. His shot is parried by Drommel. De Ligt looks to clear it. It hits his own man and it falls to Awar, who puts it in the back of an empty net. France just taking their time. They're in absolutely no rush. They know that the clock is with them. Martial, Hernandez in acres of space. Taliso making the Dutch chase the ball. But Memphis does well to intercept the pass. And now Memphis is in behind again. He's one-on-one -on -one again with Mondanda. It's Memphis. What a... He's missed an absolute golden opportunity, Memphis. Daily blind. De Vrij. His ball's been cut out by Hernandez and France are looking to counter again with Ousmane Dembele. The sheer amount of pace of the French side. Dembele gets it across. It falls for Mbappe and that is the sealer. Kylian Mbappe makes it 3-0 to France. They will be going to the European Championship final to avenge the defeat to Portugal four years ago. Well, technically five, but you know what I mean beaten finalists in Euro 2016. They make it to another final. Martin Darun looks to play it long. It's a hopeful ball. But all hope is gone for the Dutch it would seem. Ball over the top for Martial. Where is the Dutch defence? They're at sixes and sevens as Martial makes it four. France have absolutely dominated this second half. We wanted more impetus in this second half. The first half was drab and dreary. This has been delightful from the boys in blue. France surely have to be the favourites going into the final after this performance as the Dutch have been absolutely ripped apart and France are heading to the European Championship final for the second consecutive tournament. Desperate to avenge that defeat to Portugal Will they be able to do it? On this form, it would be difficult to look past them. The Dutch didn't show up today and they've been punished for it. They go home, France go to the final. So with France qualified for the final, who will be joining them? Will it be a repeat of the 2018 World Cup final against Croatia? Or will England be able to make it to the finals of an international tournament for the first time since 1966. It's been a tournament of incident and talking points and this semi-final is no different. But the possibility of a repeat of the World Cup final or with a chance for England to avenge Croatia who put them out at this stage of the 2018 World Cup of course. Can they go one better and reach the final? It's going to be a tough ask for both of these sides. But after the next 90 minutes we will see who will be joining the French in the Euro 2020 final. Croatia restart with the throw. Strinic finds Pasalic. Now Nikola Vlasic. He can run. He certainly can. He's still running. Nikola Vlasic. What a run. And Henderson has to deny him. The danger of Croatia. And Nikola Vlasic. Breskalo with the resulting corner. Lovren's up and Lovren's hit the bar. Henderson completely stranded. Foden to deliver this free kick. In it comes. Headed out by Dejan Lovren. Fakayo Tomori picks it up. 
finds Kyle Walker who looks to switch it out to Sterling. He does. Lovely touch by Sterling. Gets it back, Raheem Sterling. In towards Mason Mount and he's hit the crossbar. Both sides have rattled the woodwork. But England do win it back. Mount finds Foden in acres of space. He's got the overlap if he needs it in Kyle Walker and he does. It's Walker, looks to get it across. In towards Phillips, it's fallen for Harry Kane and England have the lead. But the flag has gone up. The flag has gone up. Is this going to be ruled out for offside? VAR checks. And VAR has disallowed the goal. English hearts broken again. Walker's ball across. Calvin Phillips with the flick on. And he is offside. He is offside as he taps it into the back of the net. Another corner for Croatia. In by Breskalo. And Petkovic is there. Bruno Petkovic gives Croatia the lead. Five minutes before the break. And England are behind the Croatia again in an international semi-final. We approach the two minutes of added time at the end of this first half. Croatia with the lead. Lovren finds Jedvaj. Squares it inside for Brozvic. He's going to fire from range. What a hit from Marcelo Brozvic. It was his goal that got them to this stage. And it could be his goal that takes them to the final. What a hit from Brozvic. Jedvaj played it inside. Look at the space and the time he's been given. And he's absolutely fired it with the help of the post into the back of the England net. Well, well, England have it all to do in this second half. As two quick fire goals from Croatia have given them the advantage. They're 45 minutes away from a European Championship final. Foden with his corner right at the beginning of the second half. Levakovic comes and gathers and clutches the ball to his chest. And he's going to try and, even though we've run at the start of this second half, he's going to try and waste as much time as possible. But he's given it to Vlasic with a terrific pass. Nikola Vlasic, that's a terrific ball. Brekalo's completely unmarked. And Josip Brekalo makes it 3 0 Croatia as Vlasic looks up, puts in a peach of a ball. And Brekalo, completely unmarked, puts it past Dean Henderson. 3 0 Croatia. It's been a dominant performance. England have had no answer to it. And Croatia, the final whistle has blown. Croatia will join France in the European Championship final. Heartbreak again for England at a semi final. Even double heartbreak as it's at the hands of Croatia. They had the chance to get their revenge. But Croatia have absolutely dominated and they have qualified for the European Championship final where they will take on France. After all the twists and the turns of this tournament, it has finally come down to this as only two teams remain, the reigning world champions in France and the team that they beat to win that honour in 2018 in Croatia. It's a repeat of the World Cup final. Will it be a repeat result? Both teams were dominant in their semi-final victories, but that counts for nothing now. 90 minutes stands between both of these sides and European glory. France look to do an international double for the second time in their history, as Croatia look to win their first ever piece of silverware. It's not going to be easy for either side, but it's going to be great for us neutrals watching on as France take on Croatia in the Euro 2020 final. Lovakovic with the long goal kick, looking for Vlasic. It's cut out by Kempembe. Rebic is up there. Vlasic. Great ball forward. It's Andre Kramaric. And it's straight at Mondonda. The first chance of the game falls to Croatia. Dembele to deliver this corner. In it comes. There's the header. It's headed away. But Dembele's going to get another chance to reset. Or he's just going to run it himself. And his shot straight into the arms of Lovakovic. Barisic down the line for Perisic, gives it back. Now inside to Modric, finds Vlasic. T Tolisso in well, and again Tolisso. But it's a poor pass, it's loose. It's Ante Rebic! And Mondanda has to make a fingertip save to direct the ball over the bar to deny Ante Rebic. The halftime whistle goes. Both sides have had their opportunities. France leading the way in regards to match stats and XG. But that doesn't count for anything. The only statistic that either set of fans will be looking at is that nil-nil. Barisic to take this free kick in a dangerous position out by Zuma. And Benzema's going to get onto this now. Karim Benzema, he's on his own, needs support. Vlasic is back defending. 
great work rate and determination from the Croatia forward back defending Livakovic plays along for Rebic his flick on intercepted by Kempembe and France look to come again with Zuma he plays it long but it's cut out again by Croatia but he's going to get another chance to play it forward finds Paul Pogba we know what he can do with his long ball Mbappe what a touch that is Kylian Mbappe's in and what a miss that is from Mbappe back to Tolisso looks for options find Dembele France just looking to pick the pocket Pogba with a fantastic ball and a fantastic hit from Usman Dembele and France do take the lead through one of the most unlikely sources on the pitch Usman Dembele brilliant patient build up from France Pogba's ball forward and Dembele has smashed it past Livakovic inside the final five minutes Croatia have a throw Jedvai finds Pasalic they have to make this count Croatia great ball forward Brekalo he's got options in the middle he plays it across Kramaric what a miss what a miss from Andre Kramaric that surely is the chance and that surely is going to be it France or surely they have done it the full time whistle goes and France have completed an international double having won the 2018 World Cup they take their place at the head of the European table as France have won the 2020 European Championships after an incredible performance in this tournament the right team has won it arguably Croatia will be absolutely devastated for the second time in two finals they've lost to France this a much closer affair than the first time but it doesn't matter all that matters is that France win this game by a goal to nil so there we have it France have won Euro 2020 after a 1-0 victory over Croatia Usman Dembele getting the winning goal absolutely well deserved France their team is just absolutely stacked so there's a very good chance that this is what's going to happen uh, but before we end the video let's have a look and see who won what award winner Antoine Griezmann has won what was that best player is it yeah European best player goes to Antoine Griezmann well there you go that's a bit odd uh, let's have a look see who is. Erling Haaland gets and Marcus Rashford both finished with four goals Unai Simon gets the highest rating with 7.9 Griezmann gets the most assists uh, Simon completes the most clean sheets so there we go that's just little bits and pieces but the most important statistic is that one right there France won Croatia nil and that is how Euro 2020 is gonna go it's gonna be a France Croatia final and France are gonna win it so if I were you I'd get down the bookies and stick a tenner on it immediately and with the end of the tournament comes the end of this video thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy it I know it's a long one thank you for sticking thank you for sticking through it the whole way if you did enjoy it do hit that like button do hit that subscribe button and let us know in the comment section below how you think the Euro 2020 is going to go once again thank you all so much for watching and as always we will see you in the next one